Okay guys, I'm gonna do a quick review of this ready-made RC Cricut version 2 5.8 gigahertz FPV video transmitter. This is the 200 milliwatt version. Um, this is my first FPV transmitter. And I did a lot of research online trying to figure out which one to get, so on and so forth. And this one seemed to be the best option for me. Um, I like the anodized aluminum housing. A lot of the ones you see on the market have the clear shrink tube casing. Um, this one just seemed a little more robust. I was thinking maybe the aluminum housing would act as a heat sink. Um, so I purchased one and have used it a couple times and been pretty happy. Uh, for now, I have only been using the linear antenna. I will be upgrading that soon. So what I'm going to attempt to do is do a power output test. I was curious to see if this actually uh, outputted 200 milliwatts. So I have a spectrum analyzer and I'm going to hook it up and see what we get. Be checking power output and we'll make sure all of the uh, the channels are on par with what they say they're supposed to be. Okay, we have our Cricut 200 milliwatt transmitter hooked up to our spectrum analyzer. Uh, just a generic rig I have set up. Lipo battery. Uh, 3s and a camera. I currently don't have the camera hooked up to the transmitter. That's going to give us a little bit cleaner power reading. And currently we have our frequency on R1, which is 5.685 gigahertz. Kind of the uh, bottom end of the spectrum of what the transmitter is capable of. So we're going to click and hold the button. You'll see the small LED in there turn on. And we are reading about 24 dBm. If we go over to our monitor real quick. Quick dBm to milliwatt conversion. At 24, it's actually 0.251 watts, so about 250 milliwatts. Um, when we plug in our camera, that number will fluctuate quite a bit. Okay, now we have the camera plugged in. So it's actually sending video through. And that's going to make our channel power fluctuate quite a bit. But still, you can see it's a solid 22 to 24 dBm. So it is, in fact, exactly what they claim. Okay guys, we are going to test our first frequency, uh, channel R1, which is 5.658 gigahertz. We have our center frequency set for that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Our transmitter is set to R1, and we're going to press and hold to turn it on. So right here in the middle is our center frequency. It's actually off a little bit. And so we're going to dial it over just to see how far off it is. Right there, right on the money. So if we look, the center frequency is 5.657. That's about five megahertz off roughly pretty accurate in my opinion let's try another one here 
Let's do frequency R8, which is 5.917. And then we need to change our channel. Okay, sorry about that guys, I had to um, sit on megahertz, not gigahertz. So we're going to go ahead and click and hold our transmitter on one more time. And again, looks like we're about 5 megahertz off. So 5.917, we're going to dial it over. Five point nine one six and a half, if you will. Again, really close, and that's from uh, one end of the spectrum to the other, from five point six five eight to five point nine one seven. Okay, another thing to note: I've had this transmitter going for a little while. I'm going to shoot the temp. It is quite warm. So you see right now we have an ambient temp of about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And that transmitter on the bench is about 121 degrees. Um, when it's flying you have the airflow around it. It should be a lot cooler, but it's definitely warm to the touch just sitting here. Uh, may not be a bad idea to Possibly mounted on a small heat sink uh, that might help it live a little longer. I'm sure some of that heat's getting dissipated into the analyzer, also. Just one thing to note. Okay, well, guys, in conclusion, um, I really like the ready made RC Cricket transmitter. This is a 200 milliwatt. Um, Quality seems nice, seems durable. It's got some sweet little mounting tabs. So I'm pretty sure the 25 and 600 milliwatt versions will be just, just as nice. Um, I am going to upgrade to some better antennas here in the near future. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, and this threw me through a loop the first time, the signal wire from your camera also needs to have the ground plane reference from the transmitter. The transmitter does have 5 volt output, which means when you click the transmitter on, when you hook up your little wiring harness here, the brown wire and the red wire will give you 5 volt out to power a 5 volt FPV camera. This particular camera is a 12 volt camera. Um, and when I was first setting this up, I only had the signal wire going into the wiring harness for the transmitter. Now the reason I did that is in testing on my computer monitor, that's all I needed to get the video through. The transmitter, for some reason, which seems obvious now needs the ground reference so what I've done is I've omitted the and I've modified the harness that I got with the um, transmitter but I've omitted the 5 volt reference uh, or excuse me the 5 volt power power to the camera and I only have the video signal and the ground and if you can look that comes from my camera and that plugs into the wiring harness for the transmitter. So I still have my red 5 volt out and I'll probably upgrade to a 5 volt camera here shortly but just for the time being. I just omitted that from this end of the plug and it works beautifully. So I hope this uh, helps a newbie like myself make their decision 
Um, I don't work for ready-made RC or anything like that. But in doing some research, this looked like the nicest piece on the market. And it's uh, priced pretty affordably. So, I like it. Happy flying, guys.